Hages. Back in the Eddie Hages Tiny House to give another excellent episode of the High, Low, and No Show. With Hages Sumaro. And what a splendid tiny house it is. Yeah, very comfortable, huh? Very comfortable to do the podcast. Uh, it's happy to be your host today for this uh, day of shows that we're putting together. And uh, what's on the agenda for this episode, Hall? Looky here, what have we discovered? Well, we discovered that we want to do a podcast. We discovered a conversation that we wanted to talk about. We discovered the basis of all mankind's um, worries is basically the fact that they don't worry enough about where they've been, where they came from, and what they're up to, and they take everything for granted. And they're too busy trying to reinvent the fucking wheel instead of just wheeling it along. So... Today we're going to talk about discoveries. And none of this would even be uh, coming together if me and Hall Road didn't discover each other. Uh, that's right. Three or four years ago. So uh, that discovery uh, is obviously fruitful. Obviously, you're all coming along for this ride, enjoying our company, and right. uh, the synergy of uh, what happens when And the most together. important conversation of all time, which we're going to boil down the 69 most important achievements mankind had ever, ever brought to this earth. Put them in a bracket, put them in, in a field of 64 or so, and have them go in single elimination battles, as you can see behind me, to boil down to the single most important thing. Now, we've talked about inventions. We've talked about paradigm shifts. We're getting today to talk about discoveries and things that mankind has stumbled upon that have changed the course of history and either improved our lives or, or tectonically shifted the, the way things are done, the way we do business, including, you know, things like, I don't know, electricity, but, you know. It's the baseline of all inventions. Without without these things that we're going to talk about today, probably no invention ever happens. So it's, Yeah, what happens without discoveries? Discoveries come first, and then necessity is the mother of invention. But mankind kind of has to stumble upon it and have these ideas and things. And, you know, there might not have been any mankind if it wasn't for mushrooms. Mushrooms might be the most important discovery of all time. And I'm talking about psychedelic mushrooms here because mankind, if you believe in out of Africa, was an ape. And we basically turned the corner and started becoming more sentient, conscious, you know, um, heady individual animals with using our brain power because we started to exponentially use our synapses more as brought on through the discovery of mushrooms and other substances that take your brain to the next level even beyond that discovery of and utilization of a lot of the plant-based kingdom we have a whole market granted uh, it's a small market these days because of western med medicine is like kind of taking over the marketing and uh and using using current technologies to their benefit but there's a whole brand of different types of oils out there, eucalyptus oil, uh, lavender, lavender, tea tree oil, what have you. But yes, I mean, certainly nature provides a certain bounty that humankind has been able to take advantage of. And from witchcraft to medicine to alchemy, you know, to the snake, snake oil salesman, yeah, to turn from Jesus turning water into wine. I and mean, that's what we're talking about today. And speaking of wine, I think, you know, fermentation and the discovery of Fermented sugars and alcohol, it's got to be top C, huh? It's got to be A1, A2 type of C. I mean, alcohol has had such a profound effect on most all of humankind, and whether or not they knew they were doing it or when they started doing it or when they do it to excess these days, it's all related to the fact that there's, you know, there's some fire in that water. Yeah, it's a tough road being on this earth, and with all the time that we have to spend on it, it's easy to get bored. Uh, and it's really easy just to feel good and um, the way that you like to feel good, whether that's alcohol, uh, smoking uh, a big bong load of your uh, favorite indica or something, uh, uh, tripping out on some hallucinogen or, hey, if you think if you're not in that ca category, I don't do any drugs. Well, are you How in the category? Coffee. Coffee. Every, that's one that everyone Stimulus, takes. Right. Or are you on the antidepressant or anti-anxiety medicine? alter in your mind it's to me it's the same the same so how many people are there are really really straight edge it's probably a very slim group of people uh if you're going to be really honest about but good for you 
But, but yeah. like you said, all you, if you feel bad, just rub some essential orange oil on yourself, and you know you can smell smell that and feel better. It's an uplifting fragrance, and you know certainly mankind has made many discoveries when it, in the fields uh, of, of medicine and or entertainment, casual pleasure, whatever that kind of intertwine into this uh, this you know particular backdrop that we're talking about today, and you know so. With, with with our friends the alcohol and our friends coffee, we're talking about depressants and stimulants. But but you know beyond that, we're talking about you know medicine and things of that nature. Or you know when it's really it's, it was really dry out here in the last couple of weeks. We've had the Santa Ana winds blowing into Southern California, very little precipitation. You know what's been happening is static electricity, right? You rub against something, touch a piece of conductor, you remember you get shocked. I'm like that must have been a huge discovery. They probably thought about that in the old times, like that was. Witchcraft or some kind of magic we couldn't explain. Well, and then but our, it was a our our friend and one of our forefathers of uh, this great country, America. The, and that we hope that uh, we have a broad international viewingship of the show. Certainly. But Brent, Ben Franklin, yeah. crazy enough to make his uh, make his son go outside in a lightning storm with a key attached to the end of a uh, of, of a kite. string yeah. <laughs> attached to a kite and fly that thing and. And get get zanged a little bit out there. Uh, uh, great insight, right? Even though to this day we still haven't um, really learned to harness the power of the lightning bolt, unless you're the once the old San Diego Chargers. Now the the even the they have Chargers. They have used to be able to bolt up. Like they'd be so bolted, you'd be Michael Bolton. And they still no haven't more. super bolted yet, so they're they're not even taking advantage of the, the harness true, of yeah. the power. The, the, the sad thing about this, there's not even lightning here in San Diego. <laughs> well, good, because lightning would just create another wildfire. We don't need any more of yes, those. Thank God certainly, God. Mother Nature gives, Mother Nature takes away, and, and mankind stumbled upon things like, let's say, penicillin through rotten oranges, and, you know, Louis Pasteur and some of these great scientists and, and medicine men have learned how to harness that and turn it into vaccines and, and manage to prolong uh, life for humankind as we know it, manage to eradicate things like polio and things of that nature. Those are all discoveries made through the scientific process, but people have to stumble upon them. And sometimes it's kind of like you get one thing when you're looking for the other, like the discovery of the new world. Christopher Columbus left Europe by all accounts looking for India, and he came upon, you know, America with his yeah. good friend Americo Vespucci. So that's a huge discovery. Could we maybe we could no. put the discovery of the new world on there? I, I know. I, no, I debate. You just said we had a great country here. We're in America. We do, you know, but we, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. There's already people here. Right. Like, I'm how not, can you discover? I'm not something? putting Chris o up there. I'm just saying, like discoveries, like you know, stumbling upon it, like Darwin just stumbled on you know those islands out there, and then he, what was it? One of those islands. I can't remember. The one with the dodo dog? Yeah. The yeah. One we it's not, not the dodo birds or whatever, but, you know, Darwin ha had discovered upon his theory of evolution where he could see, the, you know, definite evidence that said, this was the pre-model, this is model 1.0 of this species, here's model 2.0, and disagree. that, you know, species keep coming I out. think if the printing press was discovered five, six hundred years before, or not discovered, invented, invented. before it happened. Because that's definitely an invention, not a discovery. Right. But before it was invented, I think you we would have known that the Vikings pushed, and that and no, maybe there's not there's a, some very compelling evidence coming out settlements up in Greenland and in uh, the in Canada and all that. So I'm going to give that to the Vikings. You know, that's for you guys to look into. Right. We are, we're not archaeologists by any means. We read stuff. We choose to believe it or not, and then we boil it down because me and him, the combination of me right. and Hall, like we can disseminate what is the biggest impact and in, in, in what... layman's terms, basically, these discoveries great. If, if if you know you want to get academic about it, we're gonna make your own show and then GFY between now and then. But the point is it's like here we go. We discover a little a little dissension in the ranks. You know, we might not be on the same page. It might be the first time. So you guys can lay back in the cut and watch us as we're about to hash out what's important. And what is not? What's high on our list? What's low on our list? And between him and I, the Hages and Hollow show, what's a no show? And that's what we're working on now. Speaking specifically of discovery, so go ahead and yell at your camera, yell at your computer, yell at your wife. I don't care, but it won't matter because we're the ones coming up with the list. And if we come up with 16 discoveries and we come up with only eight, that's tough ass. So, discoveries, you know, things along the lines of 
How about a snake bite? How about a snake bite? Man went from getting bit by snakes, getting bit by critters, to turning around and turning that into an antidote. What do you think about that? That's a hell of a discovery to know that the poison and the antidote are the same thing. I still don't know how that works. Work. I mean, you go get a flu shot? Do you get a flu shot? No, of course no, I don't get a flu shot. I don't because I is, drop food on the floor on purpose and then eat. And I create my own antibiotic right there, or right. own vaccination. But essentially, dirt, do I make dirt and dirt don't hurt, right? Do I believe that you need to be vaccinated? Yes, like whether you do it on your own and willfully. And, uh, but a yearly and, flu vaccine where they put the, the, the most recent viral, virulent strain in you at a low dose to make yeah. you immune to it, it just blows my mind that somebody figured out that the poison and the antidote are the same thing. You know what, what, a, know what another good way to, to get to get your own vaccination, and, and it's a little fun game, it's, it's risky at times, but I like to go out on uh, nature hikes and just randomly pick a leaf that I've never seen before and put it in my mouth, and I have a litmus, litmus, litmus test yeah. on this. If it starts burning my mouth, I spit it out. If it's sweet, yeah, I'll chew on it for a little bit, maybe swallow it a little bit. But uh, all in all, I'm in proving my uh, it makes you humanity. shit for seven days. And, maybe you should stop eating. And, um, just disclaiming it right now, I'm not a doctor. You shouldn't take any of my advice. Uh, you should look in this. Uh, but it's it's worked wonders. I, I'm fairly sure that uh, it's improved my immunity and. Uh, to make me a stronger person. Exposure, person. right. I think exposure is a big point, you know. So that's the discovery is that people get to expose themselves more and more to things like, you know, in today's day and age, exposure might be a flasher in the streets, you know, he walks around and throws himself. <laughs> but that's not the exposure my friend Aegis was talking about. But these are discoveries that people have to make. I mean, people make, you know, discoveries on a personal basis all the time, you know, and they make discoveries for mankind. They make Discover card purchases using a credit card. I mean, <laughs> what happens? They have a one percent cash back. Right. I usually, uh, with that money, I'll usually buy something that I, some bullshit thing that I, I shouldn't even buy. I look at it as free money, uh, although I'm probably paying a lot more in interest. And they sponsored but, this this show to a small, so to a mightily degree by giving both of us credit lines. So, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying, like, let's think about it. We got alcohol. We got cocaine. We got petroleum. Coffee, mushroom. Petroleum. petroleum. I, this is like I don't a drink pop. petrol, but he does, and so does our friend Chocolate Moon. Yeah, from the movie Top Secret. I'm not talking about olive oil, uh, but I am talking about gasoline. Gasoline that is like the power source be behind pretty much all of our means and modes of transportation. Most of our means, uh, or a good, at least a good bit of electricity, uh, heating of homes. And uh, it's just a substance. We did not make that substance. We learned to refine it. We learned how to find it. And uh, Beverly Hillbillies, they wouldn't be living in yeah, that mansion. The black and, gold, um, the crumbling crude, bubbling crude. But here's more to that point. Now, petrol become, or, 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 you know, crude oil or whatever you want to call it, becomes so permanent and so pervasive in our daily life that we need so much, that we need to do discoveries just to find more of it. So now they're discovering more ways like fracking and other crap or more methods like the, the North American this, you know, Dakota pipeline to move this oil all over the oh, earth. It's got a deleterious effect on humanity, I think. Yeah. So that discovery, which started off having a, a, you know, a useful uh, uh, offshoot, has become kind of a mandate and an industry and, 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 a, and a double-edged sword for all humanity. If you think about this, I was walking around um, New England last weekend. And a lot of those houses are heated by oil furnaces. You could just smell it in the air. Now, in California, we're on electricity grid, and, you know, like we're not using the old oil furnaces. But these guys had little pipes where you'd unscrew it. The guy with the oil would come pour in an oil base, and that, that would, you know, that would fuel their furnace. So, petrol as a fuel, you know, we are carbon based life forms ourselves. So, in millennia after we perish and we get put into the ground, and thousands of millions of years after that, we turn into fuel for. You know, like the dinosaurs did for us. So it's carbon-based life forms we'll be that turned fuels. into fossil fuels. Yes. Exactly. It, it, it's uh, I, I, it's one of those pros and cons. We don't know what it's doing. Uh, I'm not. I don't believe in uh, this whole climate change per se. How it's pointed to the people only because the warming and the cooling of the globe has been going on at the time of the start of this great planet. But I. Definitely wonder if the burning of fossil fuels, though it is probably creating pollution, which I agree, pollution is a, a no bueno. 
for any of us. That's bad. Okay. May, but it's bad for people. Okay. But I wonder if the plants actually like it. If it gives more fuel for the plants. So there's an unintended consequence for it. But to his point, like let's think about discoveries and stay on point there and say, hey, he mentioned fossil fuels. Well, how about fucking fossils, everybody? Archaeology, right? Archaeology and the science to go back and retrace the history and the science that, that led to us being here. To be able to dig up fucking dinosaur bones and piece them back together blows my mind. Like, how do you know it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex and not you know, a Rhinosaurus tax or something like that. I mean, you get to find how, enough bones. Yeah, they find enough bones. These guys are bone diggers, but like they also go and they, they piece together old societies. That's how we know about the Egyptians or the Machu Picchu, the Peruvians, you know, Spooky, all these ancient yeah. civilizations. It helped piece together. And maybe if we don't know where we're coming from, we don't know where we're going, which I think discovery in essence of itself, something like archaeology has to be a science that probably belongs on this board because without it we wouldn't know s about H. where we came from yeah I, even beyond the animals that we've discovered in prehistoric times there's also just understanding the changes of earth finding the she rings of the trees the rings stuff. of the trees we're finding she shells like on top of mountains that obviously right now aren't in contact with any ocean or water but Knowing that right, Unless at one, Jesus was playing Johnny Appleseed with sea shells on the top of the mountain. I always would. I thought that if I was God, like, and I created the world in <laughs> four thousand BC, uh, I, I would think I, I'd be there. a little joker. Like, I'd create all these forms of dinosaurs. Like, I'd spend a lot of time, like, making sure they're anatomically correct, and I'd just scatter some bones here and there. So people go <laughs> down this this hole of like discovering a dinosaur, and then you go to heaven, and you're like. I believe in evolution because I found all these dinosaurs and pieces together. And it's just like, dude, you just don't get it, do you? You just should have believed the book. That's what you had to do. And uh, joke on you, like, go uh, hang out with Satan for eternity. Right. But, um, and that's a discovery that we're all prone to find out when we go beyond this, uh, our mortal our mortal flesh to the next level. But now that we're alive and kicking, hey, just in a whole road show, we're, we're, just, we're just bringing you a bunch of stuff to bring your life into perspective as well as ours and saying, these are all the things we take for granted or take advantage of on any given day, and we're not taking them for granted today. Things like, I think, you know, farming, discovering that you could plant something, see it in the cycle, and expect it to grow if certain conditions were met, and do it again and again. And then the discovery of over farming or over planting, and, and then and the dust bowl effect one. or whatever, you know, it's like, you know, and then you can discover that you can, uh, you can modify these goddamn plants. And GMO, things of that nature, and that goes maybe more into invention. But these are, you know, this is how humans are manipulating their world through discovery to make, to make, to change, to make changes, whether or not for good or bad. So I would say farming, you know, or, or beekeeping, let's say discovery of the bees. bees Knowing, are, yeah. Learning that bees are, you know, influential and, and, and paramount, you know, in the entire food chain. And 33% of all the food that comes around this earth. They pollinate and cross pollinate and drag things around. Humans were only, you know, busy discovering how to harness bee um, honey in hives for sweeteners or to ferment for meat or other alcohols. And then now we're discovering that without bees, and bees are dying because of neo incontinent and all this other uh, Monsanto crap that's killing them to 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 make other uh, you know farm crops more viable. That we can't do it without bees, and you're going to discover that. So every Action has an equal and opposite reaction. I think there is a science for you, and that's what I always believe in. Newtonian physics, theory of relativity, things of those natures are huge discoveries. Speaking of bees, though, I just want to come back to that. Uh, well, there, at least uh, a few people think that mead was the very first fermented beverage of everything. Well, why not? Because yeah. you, you need some sort of sugar source, uh, and they they somehow whenever they came across that it was a, you were able to ferment honey and create alcohol. When they were doing it back in the day, they would just take the whole nest, the whole hive, bees, the bee venom, the whole hive, the, whole hive, uh, the, the propolis, the royal jelly, the regular honey, just take the whole hive, bees in it, live bees, I throw like it into a vat of boiling water, let it boil down, put it in uh, another vat, let it ferment, and they thought like the ferment, uh, what is like the fermenting? that you put in any alcohol. Yeast? Yeast. 
they didn't know that this was a particular thing. They just actually thought there were spirits in the air, and which the air does have yeast. Hocus pocus. And the the spirits of the air, therefore spirits. Would I'm gonna I'm gonna ye yes. spirits of the air give ye alcohol. Well, that's one plausible explanation of that. I mean, bears might have been getting, getting drunk off honey. I mean, if they didn't bother to make meat, it would ferment on its they own, just, right? They, they the don't point have is it would ferment on its own, not right? Eat the damn honey. Right, no discipline because they got to they got to get ready for hibernating. But these are discoveries. I'm sure you know we had to discover does a bear shit in the woods. You know that type of stuff. You might walk down the woods and be like, hey, I was too quiet. I just discovered a bear. Now he's going to eat me. You know, and you discover what that's all about. So think about the discoveries that you don't make in life. Sometimes their their journey, sometimes their uh, you know jumps, you know that you have to make in your own life. You have to push yourself to discover, and it's precisely because people have gone out there and been you know there are the explorers, there are the scientists, and there are the poets and the dreamers, and all of these people go and discover things, and we're going to help rediscover them here on a Havis and Hallrow show. Yeah, speaking of uh, discoveries that have uh, changed our footprint and uh how we protect ourselves uh animal skins and animal clothing right but we we realized that certain animals could survive in harsh harsh conditions from their their fur and leather and their skin so what we learn how to do clean that skin up uh do some processing of it and then we animals. wear it on top of our own skin it's literally a second skin that led to to further discoveries, talk about the adventuring into the wild, adventuring to the top of the mountain, like the original guys that I right. uh, left it. Africa, where all you were sub Saharan and all you needed was a loincloth or whatever, yeah. not even that. You just run around, you don't need any clothes, and you go up to Europe across the Iberian Peninsula or whatever, like yeah. that. You realize you need, you, need, you need to change up your clothes and say, Ye old yak over there has got a nice, you know, I'll gladly trade you, <laughs> you know, a spear in the not belly. Trade. I'm just going to take. I'm just gonna take that. And you got you probably have some uh you know some 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 wall cave cave paintings that, that portray that. So there's another discovery it goes back to archaeology. You discover that this is how mankind decided or learned how to wear an extra layer is because they went out and killed the old yak or the old bison and said, We're gonna deal with this like you know, the Native Americans, you know, did in a very balanced and meaningful way that, you know, the Europeans basically just have uh, exacerbated, you know, discoveries like Maybe fishing, fishing nets, things like that. Right in the sea. You know, you'd be able to harvest and harness Mother Nature for humankind's benefits. There's no doubt that's why there's eight fucking billion of us, soon to be too many, you know, and we live in this matrix society, but because of inventions like this that made it less of a survival and more of a coping kind of lifestyle. We're coping in and of ourselves due to our good friends' fermentation and and other stimulants like coffee and Trader Joe's, but you know. So I mean, these are all big time discoveries. How about like internal discoveries? You know, things like um, meditation, Tai Chi, martial arts. Uh, they might be more of a wild card necessarily, but you know, we do our own discoveries internally. There's our external world, and then there's an internal world. And really, all we ever see or know is our synapses are telling us. You know, it's all stimuli. Yeah. Stimulation. It's in a, a hazy little area. The whole conversation, but it's worth. And I hope we're stimulating you. The right? conversation of that, like the, in the internal, uh, the the journey to overcome things. Like I, I've been getting into this this uh, this ultra marathon runner named David Groggins. And if you want to get motivated, watch one of his YouTube videos because he's just absolutely amazing. And he has a quote that I just I think is so true for all of us, me included, a lot of times that most people stop at 40 percent and that just showed like we have the capacity and willpower to go so far you know but our our own mental our challenges and the way that we look at things that we're going to die if we go too far like that it prevents us or it's it's tough so that whole inner discovery is some, so sometimes you even have to like create an adversity condition like uh, these guys, uh, there's a, another documentary called Touching the Void. These two guys from Switzerland were summoning a, a place in the Andes, Andes Mountain, for the very first time. And when when they were coming back, they uh, they ran out of fuel to, to melt snow from water. And they had a, a really big journey to get back. 
and one guy broke his leg and like at the top and they i'm not going to get into all of it but <laughs> the guy like He's literally yeah. for five days no water no food climbed, climbed his way out of this insane condition and survived and talk about like a journey with him to get through i think they said that only three percent of the people on the planet would survive that do the people well he's obviously stressing the fact that that you know if you push your boundaries you never know where you can get until you do push them certainly i'd scare these guys and i think they're nutcases but that's their own that that's their own uh you know that, that's their prerogative to go and push their boundaries and if they they, they certainly think that you know humankind deserves to come up and because they need to push themselves what well, we all do whether it's mentally physically or spiritually we all owe ourselves a little bit more gratitude in order to push the boundaries and know that we can withstand it because i mean we can withstand it we can overcome it because you know the body definitely handles these kind of things and there are stories of human crime but i'm sure there's for every one of those stories there's the stories of the guys who fucking died on the mountains yeah, or the absolutely. guys who died you know trying to run too far you know but the discovery that you can push it to the next level you know the discovery that you can put a 10-foot rim and you can dunk on it you don't just have to lay up the ball <laughs> but you could slam dunk the ball it's amazing. So these are all discoveries that we, as humankind, keep coming up with here and there. And, you know, you were talking about going up and down these hills and the guy's running 40, 40 miles, you know, sorry, 400 miles or 140 miles. And people stop at 40%. I think, you know, the motto of this is like, work starts when you feel like stopping. You know, when you hit the wall, you got to climb over it. Bare knuckles, bloody knuckles, whatever. And that's work. You know, and we all got to work in certain some fashion. Somebody's going to pay us, and we're going to pay us. We got to show up. So maybe a discovery. That's how gene. That's where really our threshold is. for pain. I mean, we never know our threshold for pain, and hopefully, you guys are experiencing some of that right now as we ramble on. And you're going, "Oh my God, what the fuck are they talking about?" Yeah. Well, this is what we're talking about: discovery. So, without any ado, we, there's one other one that I think is important. That we what's another mention. discovery? We did put it into the inventions as a. Uh, metal forging but i think the steel in general uh all of the the alloys that we use steel gold but i think steel is probably to me the most important of all of them you see that almost in it's around us all the time right in some sort of man-made form whether it be your car whether it be some sort of weapon uh the hardware in your house to make everything a little bit easier uh, but that's definitely a discovery that we didn't create steel. We just learned how to utilize it and has major impacts of where we're at. So to recap of uh, the what we have at least went over as the most important discoveries up to this point in human history, we have steel, medicine, which just branches off into all of the plant kingdom, uh, whether that's just for health reasons or psychological expansion re reasons. Right. Um, Starting with something like penicillin, you know, they used to use leeches to kind of, you know, to drain blood. And, we, you know, literally like doing a blood draw is semi-healthy. So it's not completely bad acid, but it's not going to fix all your problems. Rambo. Either. That Rambo does. First blood. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, you know, I also think, you know, discoveries, there's internal discoveries like, you know, Tai Chi or meditation or yoga, things like that. Are those the kind of personal discoveries? Because it's a personal journey through this whole earth, and if it's humankind, you know, things that help everybody cope, and that's kind of what we got down into here, medicine, alcohol, coffee, mushrooms, stuff like that, coping mechanisms, you know. We're just going exponential here. So some of these are going to wind up in our bracket, okay? And certainly we could put alcohol as the number one seed, probably, and, and, and that would be, hey, Tough luck if you go up against alcohol and expect to win, because we're going to debate alcohol yeah. and say, hey, listen, what's been more important in mankind's discoveries than, than something like this? When we sober up a little bit, I'll probably end up six or seven seed. Oh, darn it. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we'll just change that to a seven. If that's a seven, this is a 12 seed, you know? But then it still is going to take this journey from 64 down to one most single important mankind madness achievements. These are the discovery. We probably missed a few. We will pick up. There'll be a, a, a final podcast before we get to the seating. Pick all the holes that we have uh, passed over. But this is this is a big part of the bracket, right? We blasted this on the Facebook, on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the White House Monday.
And we'll just let the whole world know that this is a very important conversation we've had before the end of 2017, on the crux of 2018, and what the main kind of greatest achievements on the pages and all of the highlight and no show. Really? No! Show.